right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to the morning show on Stock Market TV. Spencer, JC, Steve, Alfonso. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Hope you have caught up on that uh, missed hour of sleep he got on sa- Saturday night, Sunday morning. We are pumped today. A lot to get to. Let's see what's on the list today. What's in our deck already? A lot of Dow charts today. A lot of Dow charts in the deck, both from JC and from today's guest at 9 o'clock, new guest on the show, Austin Harrison, Chief Market Strategist at Grindstone Intelligence. He'll be on the show at 9. And that's, so yeah, Dow, apparently. We're talking about Dow and the cryptos because we have to. I mean, we don't have to, but it's fun. Why not? Go ahead, smash the like. Here we go. Oh, all right, all right. We are back. Everybody have a good weekend. Bill Blotsky in the chat. You nailed it. It is a Crypto Monday. Crypto Monday. Crypto Monday. Um, You know, listen, uh, a really interesting weekend. Had some conversation with some folks, not uh, civilians, like real folks. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the civilians are certainly not uh, asking me questions. Even the real folks, uh, like the professionals. You're wrong. Think- Really? You're, I'm wrong? I'm having a different... I'm having... Oh, like, fine. But I'm not wrong about my experiences. I'm, I'm sharing. <laughs> I'm you're sharing. Serious. You're experience. wrong about your experiences. Are you just, Excuse are me. You just, are you just like not talking to enough people? Are you, are you getting out there? Like, Are you leaving the house? I'm getting out there, bro. I was, in, there? I was okay. in the big city, uh, New York City on Thursday. I don't know if you've heard of it. No, yeah. No, you usually... You're good at getting out there. So I just... I didn't know. I'm just... I'm not getting... I'm not getting that exuberance. There, okay, are so you? Saturday, my buddies are talking about Shiba Inu, specifically Shiba Inu. On Which the buddy? Are they, and, and they're not, these, but these they're are, traders. No, 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 no. Do they know about Shiba Inu because of you? Uh, one of them is a diver, one is a construction worker. I will ask again. Do they no. know about Shiba Inu because of you? No. No. Okay. No. Nope. All right. Listen. My, my other buddy was over here installing an antenna on my house Friday. Uh, was it a helium antenna? Yeah. So I, all right. So I got a new iPhone. Helium was trading at like a penny and I didn't re-download the app. So it was offline for almost a year. I don't, I don't know how to get back my old account. Mm. And there's like a new app now. Any experience with, with lost helium? Well, we're gonna have um, we're gonna have some professional helium miners uh, come on and, and chat. Well, I haven't asked them yet. I'm here volunteering their time. I'm hoping that they will come. I think they will. They're good. Well, they're good eggs. We should have done that already. Let's let's yeah. We need we need to do that. That'd be well, a great. Conversation. You know, we've been we've been busy doing other things, but they I I get privy to these conversations. But I want to share that with uh, with everybody else because these are smart guys. You know, these are old uh, Exxon Mobil like engineers. Like these guys are like way smarter than us. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it. while it's not like late cycle stuff, people are talking about it. And also, just remember, like, think back a couple of years, because like how quickly how quickly we forget how bad some of these narratives are. Mm-hmm. People will never trade crypto again. It's dead. These people have lost so much money, they'll never go back to it, right? First of all, I would argue, I know some friends in Miami, Part of the community just never went away. It's actually incredibly resilient, these crypto bulls. Um, and they're back. They're back in a big way. People are talking about it. Retail's back. You know, this is why we got to buy Coinbase in the 40s, because stupid narratives like this. Like, people are just going to throw out this asset class that a whole younger generation. Oh, well, 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 well. Hold on, hold asset. on, hold on, hold on. For the record, it wasn't so much that people threw out the asset class. In a lot of cases, there was forced selling. Right, because of certain circumstances that were taking place, Fugazi exchanges blowing up, frauds, etc. So there was forced selling taking place, which is a domino effect with Fortune's other selling. So yes, I agree. There was silly narratives and things like that, but the silly narratives wasn't didn't cause all the selling. There, there was there was forced selling taking place behind the scenes, as we are all well. There were 
six, t- on 60 Minutes, they're telling your parents about it on basic cable, all those things. We all know what happened. So let's remember, there was a combination of things. Can we can we get to the market? Shall Hold we? On. Hold on. Can we get Hold to the market? One more question on this, because you, you're older than me. I wasn't here for the financial crisis. Uh, to me, crypto, late 2022, the FTX blow up, all the shit that led up to it, the, the worst, like the most negative sentiment I've ever seen for any asset class, and again, wasn't around for the financial crisis, in my career, by far. Worst sentiment ever. Well, I will say this. Like in the fi- like in the financial crisis, like in every crisis I've ever studied, but those two in particular for sure, the sentiment was terrible at the end. It took a long time to get there. Right. So I remember walking down Park Avenue, talking yeah. with my boy, Georgie, and he was my shortstop in high school. And I remember being on the phone with him because he was working um, with, uh, you know, he was he was the one securitizing all of those mortgages and then shit, oh, yeah. selling them to the institutions. He was that guy. So Big I'm business. on the phone with him because I'm seeing the stock market and he's the only one of my like non-professional friends, even though he was a professional. But I knew him from back in the day and we were in cahoots and we're sharing notes and sharing ideas. And like, I'm freaking out. Cause this is like my first bear market. Like my first, you know, like a real panic in the market. And I'm, I was 26 years old. So I'm mm-hmm. a baby. And I remember like talking to him and like figuring it out. Nobody else was talking about this. None of our friends gave a damn. It wasn't until the very end. Same right. thing with crypto, right? At the very end, FTX blowing up, everybody freaking out. That was the low in the fall of 22. So let's remember that that sentiment only gets there at the end. Just like your your normie friends are asking you about cryptocurrencies. Maybe Strazes are already asking. Mine are not. I told you when my high school friends start asking, I will let you guys know it has not happened yet. It's coming. Maybe. Yeah. I, I think I think it I think it I think it doesn't come till Bitcoin gets to a hundred, or at least in the nineties. Let's well, see that's, if I'm right. Let's see if I'm right. Well, that's coming too. I don't know if you checked this morning. I think it's coming too. Why don't you hit that bumper, Spencer? I don't know. This is a fun conversation though about when the Bitcoin sentiment bottom. Because I'm Steve, I'm with you. It, it, yeah, right, it was yeah. It, it was, was really bad. I'm, I'm telling you when it bottomed. It was bad though. Remember those magazine covers in November and December of twenty two? That's the bottom. Yeah. It carried in the Q1, and yeah. then prices started rising, and that yeah. changed it. Imagine it, that. It didn't change until then. Hit the bumper, Spencer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do a quick little rundown. Dow futures down 165 points this morning. s and <gasps> down 22 handles that's about 40 basis points 43 basis points same as the dow nasdaq futures leading the way lower not a surprise down 55 uh basis points down over 100 points nasdaq futures really interesting the resiliency in the bond market i continue to call that out 30-year futures up again even with the nasdaq leading stocks lower silver flat gold flat copper up 50 bips oil up 50 bips a dollar mix in early trading not really much going on there. Um, yen up again slightly. Volatility index up, uh, pushing 16 now on the VIX, uh, pushing up the highest levels we've seen in some time. U.S. 10-year yield hovering still around that 4%. And then, of course, how can we have a, a proper rundown this Crypto Monday without talking about the money money? Bitcoin up 3000 U.S. dollars this morning. 4.3% up to $72,000 for the old BTC. Ethereum breaking above 4,000 for the first time in a few years, up 4.5%, up $181, uh, dollar, uh, uh, $181. I, I had to double check that, up $181 this morning. Solana, one up 5% today. Uh, Spencer Israel, total crypto mm. cap. Are you ready for this? Two point six something. Six three trillion dollars, ain't that something? Mm, yeah, yeah. Is that something? It's something, all right. I think uh, one your of the Dogecoin, best- your Dogecoin pushing up against new fifty-two week highs up four percent as well, Spencer. I think one of the best things you could do, <laughs> my, my Dogecoin, Dogecoin, is uh, make yourself a little list. You know, watch list, top one hundred works, and just look at it every morning. And you know it's a bull market when there's a list, you know, 10, 15, 20 deep of cryptos that probably you've never heard of uh, that are up 20, 30, 40 percent. 
And I mean, look at look at Avalanche. Look at Avalanche um, making new highs today, up ten percent. Yeah, I bought more. Uh, look at uh, Near Protocol up sixteen percent this morning. Uh, look at um, uh, wow, look at the uh, Ronin. Ronin. I flipped. Up, I flipped some of my Adam into Avalanche this morning. I'm done with the Cosmos. It's a yield trap. Who knew it would be just like other um, asset classes? Dude, Ronin. Ronin just hit new all time highs this morning. What's the ticker there? Our, Ron. Do you have a Ronin wallet? Mm -mm. I have one. I had to bridge it because I got I have doing a little staking. No big deal. Just a little staking with my yeah. with my Ronin bridge. I don't bridge. I stake, but I don't bridge. Sometimes you need to bridge. All my line. No, I don't yeah. bridge. But I do own the uni. I still think we should call it uni. Isn't that a bridge? I agree. J with wait, you. wait, For, J Steve. JC did misspeak and call it Uni on our crypto video on Friday. I did. It's Uni. See, you I did. got his head. You did. You, like, you, you did. I'm just well, gonna go with Uni because it makes me hungry and happy. Well, for the record, for the record, <laughs> Straza, I agree that it should be called UniSwap. I agree with you. It's just not like I'm yeah. with you. You know, I, I love Uni. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not convinced because the other one's sushi. There's a sushi swap. And an uni swap, so I I think you might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, but there's also a pancake swap, so mm. there go there goes that theory. <laughs> uh, Billy Cunningham, chain link, it's a good one. Yeah, link, no doubt. Link, link looks nice. All right, so let's um let's talk about. I I think this is this is one of the better charts. Um, I want to give kudos to JC here. Shout out JC here. Um, throw up the uh, the first chart there, Spencer. Come on, don't tell me this ain't a good chart. I think this is a fantastic chart. Yeah. I'm all, listen, I present a lot of charts. Some are better than others. Some are not so good. Some uh -huh. are excellent. In my opinion, this particular yeah. chart goes in the excellent category. Mm. Am I wrong? How am I supposed to interpret this? Here's, here's how it is. It's the timing that I find interesting. Gold moves first, then Bitcoin follows. Look at that bottom in, in gold, and then Bitcoin bottom slightly after. Gold goes on to new highs. Bitcoin goes on to new highs. Gold peaks, stops going up. Then Bitcoin peaks and stop going up. Then gold breaks out to new all-time highs mm -hmm. after a multi-year consolidation. Now I'm Bitcoin gonna... is breaking out to new all-time highs after a multi-year consolidation. I'm just I saying. Love it. I don't love it. Wow, you don't love uh... it. Is good. Can you this is a Spencer? Of a... It's a pretty good one. Uh, you really... I th you're reaching here, I think. You think? You think I'm reaching? Let... Yeah. Listen. Rachel, great, great chart. You would. Thank you, Rachel. It's, Thank you, Rachel. Somebody, look, somebody appreciate. This is a reach. This is a this is a reach. Do you this think is not it's a chart reach? crime? It's not a chart crime at all. It's just, it's a risk asset story, right? Is it? It's, it's not, not a. De it's not a defensive asset story. It's a risk <laughs> asset story. <laughs> no, Dude. but right, we could look at a lot of charts, whether it's the German DAX or the Nikkei or Bitcoin or now Ethereum on its way, or any one of these, you know, leadership tech stocks. They had prior cycle highs from a couple of years ago. In the case of gold, a little bit longer, right? And the best ones have broken through. And that's what both of these charts are doing here. I don't even know if I would say gold is leading though, either because Bitcoin's been so strong, gold leading back above the old highs, but Bitcoin's been just, strong. I'm just, I just find it, listen, at the end of the day, let's be serious. Are we actually going to do anything about this? Like if gold, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing like actionable here other than gold's making new all-time high. So Bitcoin probably will too. And it did for the record. Um, that's not, that's not really the point. The point here is just pointing out that the timing is very interesting is all. The bottoms come slightly earlier in gold. The tops come slightly earlier okay. in gold. The breakouts come slightly earlier in gold. Bitcoin keeps following. Okay. Okay. This this goes in the in, interesting, not actionable department. I think. I think That's Dawson nailed it. I think Dawson nailed it. I think that the risk. I think both of them are saying the same thing: that the risk is not owning it, and the risk is not owning enough of it. Sure. And that's what I told. That's what I told Liz Clayman on Thursday. I freaking love Liz Clayman. Can we give a shout out, Liz Clayman? Come on, she's not the best. Straza, Straza Spencer, you guys were hanging out with her at the uh, the party a few weeks ago, right? She's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, I, like I actually place, didn't get the chance to meet her, but you know, it you meet Liz Clayman next, next time. Right, next time, what listen, kind of what, think... what kind of poor soul were you talking to ahead of Liz Clayman? I don't Can know, we? dude. Can we? Yeah, yes, please. Fun yeah. fact: you know that the first time I ever introduced Morgan as my girlfriend, 
Oh my God, we've heard this story like four times. Two less the audience is so tired of this story. That's a, right, great, Steve, story. You don't Steve, think a great story. You don't think Steve, what's up? I'm kidding. Um, okay, so back to the gold Bitcoin. Throw, throw it up really quick. One thing we, we can and probably should ask ourselves about these charts is how important is uh, dollar weakness or is it interest rates, you know, kind of staying contained here? And if those things weren't happening, would these breakouts hold? If the dollar ticks higher today, does Bitcoin fail here? Does gold roll roll back over? Right? Like, is it dependent on some intermarket stuff? So you want to know something really interesting that gold and Bitcoin are making new all-time highs today, literally yeah. today, yeah. Um, or like in the last few days or whatever, in U.S. dollars. Yeah. But right. when you price either one of these in any of the other currencies, we've already been seeing new all-time highs. Sure. You're right. And, that, and that's a good exercise. Um, answer my question. What's more important to these two charts, staying up and to the right? Is it the dollar or is it interest rates? Isn't it going to be the same thing, though? Or you I think, that, you, I, think I, those I you think those relationships are going to diverge now? I think it's likely that that they remain highly positively correlated, but right. maybe Agreed. not. Which one's more important? I don't. I don't think that it's one or the other. I think what you just said. I think they're moving together. So it's. It, it, so I think my answer is it doesn't matter which one is more important because the one that's more important, the other one's going to follow anyway. So who gives a damn? So this the uh, least important one is going to move with the most important one. So what does it matter? Are the new highs and and the you know just monster technical breakouts from these two assets is is are those markets telling us that we should probably expect more weakness from the dollar and lower interest rates in the future? You know, it, it, it's hard to argue against that, yeah. you know, um, I mean, anything can happen. Obviously, we're yeah. seeing correlations kind of, you know, as as the bull market has progressed, as volatility has come down, we've seen correlations a little more wish washy. So I don't think that it has to be that way. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight you on that. If I said if I made the statement that for the most part, uh, the evidence from the equity market in terms of risk appetite is indicating an environment of lower interest rates and at least a US dollar that's not you know acting as a headwind for stocks right we're seeing offensive action i mean bitcoin and gold are up all year and the dollar's been up until recently right yeah but then can you take that evidence and take it one step further and say the dollar's probably likely to remain weak um, I don't know if the dollar is going to remain weak, but I or, or rates for that matter. But I do think that messy, you know, like a sideways range is probably not bad for risk assets. Contained. That's a yeah, good contained. Word. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. I I think we just worked through something. Just, um. Oh. All right. A couple more charts. I know we got a great guest on today. Uh. What about the uh. What about this uh. Dow theory divergence. I know you're you're a young man, Straza. Young man. Um, but for so here's the question for you two youngsters. Mm. Am I just the old man in the room that's looking at the Dow transports? Am I just the old man or is there validity here? And 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 these are indexes that we should be monitoring. What do you guys think? Am I the old man? Which I'm OK with, by the way, if that's the case. No offense taken. I look better than both of you. So I, mean, I don't think you throw. I don't think you. You throw this type of analysis out at all. I still think it's valid and important. I would not argue that it's as meaningful as it was many years ago when it was introduced. Yeah. Uh, how many times have we talked about when it what, was introduced like, in 1886? You mean that's what, right. what the, the new transports are? We've talked about this ad nauseum, right? It's semis. That's those right. Are the new those are the new and, transports. And at nauseum, we have said. That it is not replacing the Dow Jones transportation average. It goes back to what we always say. It's an and. We look okay. at it also. You know, like, do we look at equal weight or cap weighted indexes? We look at both. Do we look at countries around the world price in local currency or in U.S. dollars? We look at both. Do we look at the old, tra old Dow theory or new Dow theory? We look at both. You know, yeah. And, and, and by the way, when you, when, you, when you, hold on, one more thing, one more thing. When you, when you put all three together mm -hmm. and you go back... 25 years one of them's always diverging before top sometimes it's the semis diverging sometimes it's the transports diverging sometimes it's the so you know 
Yeah. Includes Sammy's making new all-time highs here. You still have transports diverging. I mean, look at the great signal that transports gave you uh, uh, prior to the pandemic. That's right. I got people on Twitter telling me, so are you saying that Dow Fury caused, you know, a virus from a Chinese lab? I'm like, no, bro. But it certainly sniffed it out. I'll tell you that much. And we were right here. We didn't have the show yet. But we were on the blog pounding the table about why we we're shorting stocks. Had nothing to do with viruses. We know we know less about viruses now than we did then. This Wait. is one of those things that for me is like a lot of things um, in technical analysis. You don't really want to overthink it or overthink like the modern day significance of the railroad industry versus what it was a century ago. Because no, it's not close. And if you brought some like U.S. historian on here, he would tell you like, Goods, goods being transported by railroads these days is probably not that big of a deal. Like you, you guys are really overthinking this. The the information continues to work. Like you like you said, we just got a great signal last cycle. This is flashing again. I think it's one of those times where you just make yourself a list, though, right? Because transports are on a broader list of pro cyclical, offensive risk on subsectors or indexes, right? And you make a list and you say how many look good and, and are confirming the action with new highs, like the industrial average here, and how many aren't. And what you'll find is that the transports are on a very lonely list of ones that are not. Semis above the, the, the old highs, broker dealers, uh, financials are pretty much there now. Anything tech related, the home builders, right? So I think- is, is, is there any credence in, you know, since, since railroad, transportation is not really a thing anymore but shipping still is shipping is more than ever so is there any credence is looking at like the ball tech dry ship index as it pertains to this stuff which which is uh the thing is that is, is is that too geopolitical well the reason i keep talking about railroads the, the thing is and i think it started as railroads i think that was like the original theory and then it was brought into transports but railroads dominate uh the transportation average yeah right that's th therein lies the issue that's right yeah, but let's be uh, serious. Who's, but who's dragging down the transports? It's the airlines. Oh, they suck. They suck. suck. Yeah, they got it. They shouldn't have so many in there, uh, and they're also very bad. Did you see that Sky West airline? Crazy. Looks different from the others. What, so do, we, what, do, we, what do we think of the Barrons West. cover? Do we care? No. Nope. <laughs> we don't care. No. Barry Ritholtz is uh, Barry Ritholtz has done a lot of great work. A lot of people have done a lot of great work on these, uh, and Barry Barry's philosophy which i totally agree with it's the non-financial publications yeah that are the bit like when time magazine comes out or the new yorker magazine like it's the non-financial ones that really stand out so barons you know funny cute listen also what's barons gonna do it comes out every week doesn't it like they have to have something on there every week fair that's also true that's right barons is my favorite among any of these publications. Not as a contrarian indicator, just to read. Yeah, listen, if if this was the uh, top, would I mm. clip this and throw it on a chart and we would talk about it? Absolutely. Uh, but I think Barron's is right probably as often as they're wrong, almost, right? It, yeah, not, you know what's Economist, cool? Bloomberg, terrible. You know what's cool? When you go to uh, when you go to News Corp, the Barons, the like the Barons floor, like they're all in the same building, like Wall Street yeah. Journal, Barons, Dow mm -hmm. Jones, or Fox, they're all in there. So when you go to the Barons floor, when you get off the elevator, the hallway has all the old Barons magazines. It's got oh, the cool. first one. It's cool. really cool. Next time I'm in the city and we're in News Corp together, uh, remind me and we'll go and I'll show you. I have file boxes full of newspapers. I used to save. Drove my parents crazy. I don't know if it's they're still in their garage or not. Stack alert. Yeah, that's alert. that's the most boomer thing you've ever said. That is pretty. That my is my pretty dad does that. My library would love what I what I collected over the years. Yeah. I stopped. I stopped years ago. Yeah, my wife's grandfather used to do that with comic books. You, you, you know, I would say um, famous ones. Yeah. What about uh, what about this one? What about this one? Uh, put up the uh, Russell two and the uh, Valley Line. Look at this one. Chop 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 chop. Up down up down up down up down. But they're going, JC. Are they're they? Going. You yeah. think so? Stop. You could draw this differently. Like, at first, it was... I could draw this. I didn't draw this. This is just the data. Yeah. I didn't draw anything. There are actually no... and There isn't a single annotation on this chart. It is literally just price. Put my so chart tell, up, me, tell, me, tell me about me, my drawing. Put, put my chart up, please. <laughs> what is this going to be? Fight of the charts now? 
It's an, I mean, he's just, he doesn't like my drawings. Nobody fucking drew anything. It's just a price. What is this? I, I'm sorry that you don't like the price action. You don't have to like it. It's at new 52-week highs. The base is complete. The long-term moving average is, you know, steadily curling higher beneath price. We're above this key shelf of prior highs. This is as clean of a primary trend reversal as they come. And you're right. going to sit there and draw it and and kind of like like pose the question, what a mess. It's not a mess. This okay. is a trend reversal. Round now, 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 what would have to invalidate your quote unquote trend reversal? 200. 200. 2000. So if, it, if it's so if it's below 200, you're completely full of shit, and my drawings are actually nice. Uh, listen, we've seen enough, right? we've seen enough failures at the upper bounds. You think? You yeah. think? <laughs> you really want to make the bet that small caps just are not going to participate? They're not going to be able. I'm not. To I'm not short small caps. I'm. I'm not sure at all. I'm not sure it's all. No, but I guess my point is like, yes, we see the base. This is a very textbook technical reversal pattern. Yeah. Um, why don't Why don't you zoom out one more year so you could show all of that former support that we're running into now? Why don't? How convenient. Yeah, you left that out. The path of least resistance is now higher. How, how convenient. Why don't you zoom out one more year and show the folks that former support that you're running into? But really, why don't, why, right don't you draw, way, why don't you draw that resistance line in Q1 of 2022 where the Russell 2000 failed and rolled over? Why don't, why don't you, know, you draw? Don't want to do that either? I, I drew my line where there's the most price memory. The market continues to tell me. You drew, over, you over, drew over, your over. line it's below like two, my line, right? Your, line, your, your, your chart is below my line. That 200 is the level here. Beneath but, my line? Can it be more obvious? This is called, so this is the principle of polarity. It's that former resistance can often turn into support. So if we were to get a throwback to that 200 level or 2000, the Russell 2000, I would expect demand. To enter okay, the well, why don't we go over quickly the principle of, of common sense? What mm -hmm. happened to the Russell 2000 last time it was at these exact prices? I think the pr the principle of common sense would suggest that why wouldn't this base and small- 25% drawdown are like- Why wouldn't this base look like every other base that we've seen over the past year? Why wouldn't this Maybe reversal pattern be valid just like every other one? Isn't that I hope, is. thinking about I hope, I hope it is. Mm -hmm. That means that bi are, that means biotechs are probably doing pretty well. That means regional banks are probably not disappearing. Um, that means that industrials are probably not doing terrible. Maybe even small cap tech will stop sucking now all of a sudden. That that's a possibility too. You know, it's funny because my mentors taught me not to fight trends. That's you right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So it's just, you know, oh, it's man. That was good. That, Steve, that was a good one. That's right. And and, who's fight, and 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 are your mentors fighting this particular trend out of curiosity? You know, I, hmm, ah, I don't know. Is there any evidence oh, whatsoever that any of your mentors are fighting this trend? Please. I'm good. I didn't think so. Um, and finally, <laughs> speaking of fighting trends. How about the NASDAQ 100 uh, rolling over relative to gold? Strats, every time he hears gold, like blood comes out of his ears. Gold again. Here it is again. Should we care? Should we care? Or is this just, is this, uh, what do you think? It was like a momentum thrust, right? From gold last week. That was just a monster move. So you're seeing the relative ratios kind of blow you know, out. But can you call it that without the miners really? I mean, the miners... I guess in the short term, they have been participating. You can even say they've been outperforming like in the last week. Well, it's measurable, right? So like maybe not a thrust for the whole group, right? The whole the whole space, but for spot gold, yeah, we you could show it on a short term rate of change in the RSI, right? Like it it was there, yeah. Why don't we get Minor like, uh, why don't we, can we do, uh, can we do like a short term rate of change of the miners? Like maybe, like we don't even have to go that far down the cap scale. We can even just do the gold bugs index, which I think is 15 stocks. You could do the, uh, the Philly, uh, is it the Philly one? The Philly gold and silver index? I think that's what, 30? There's not a lot. Is it even 30? 25? I think it's 30. See what kind of half ass gold bug I am? I don't even remember. It's more so because it was so long ago. I haven't been a gold bug in a long time, dude. So, some of these indexes, man, like no offense, Dow Jones, we love you, especially JC, but 15 stocks in Dow Utilities? Is it 15? That might be too many. It's like, come on. Why, why is there an index just for utilities? Well, there's a Dow Jones index wow. for all kinds of sectors. I think every sector has a Dow Jones index. Can you imagine a mark? Can you imagine a world where you're you're becoming like an early index provider and you're like, these are the three most important things. So you do industrials, fine. That's still true today. Railroads, what? No one would ever. It's not, not railroads, it's transportation. It's not and just utilities? Railroads. 
You, who says utilities are the most important S sector? Steve. No, like when he made indexes, he made three indexes. No, back in the day, back in the day, they Who's were he? more important. Who's he? I thought Charles Dow made the Dow Jones index. No. Yeah, no. First of all, no. No. Here we go. It no. was the industrial average, and it was the railroad average. He died 15 years later. I think 1904 he died. Yeah. It wasn't until like the 30s that they named it the Dow Jones I didn't industrial know average and Dow Jones railroad average. Then they switched it to the transportation average. The Dow Jones utility average, first of all, Charles Dow would never do such an idiotic. Say, like, how is that? Why is yeah. that a thing? That didn't come to like the 70s or the 80s, years later. And by the way, Dow Jones, Dow Jones has an index for every sector. It's not just utilities. Uh, no, you, utilities is like a special one, along with transports. Because, and, why? Because it's included in the composite? And I think it was earlier. For the record, Charles Dow had nothing to do with this. I don't know. Had nothing to do know. with this. Don't be throwing Charlie Dow under the bus like that. Not in my presence. This aggression will not stand, man. You might be right. This aggression. JC finds these weird documentaries. I might be these right. This is YouTube. a fact. Facts yeah. only. I know. You watch these weird documentaries at night. You definitely no, watch them. I, I read it's hundreds of Dow Theory letters. I have Dow Theory letters going back 140 years. Don't we have a new guest today? Not once. I, yes. Yes, we do. Mentioned. Not once. New, Unacceptable, right, Straza. You're better than that, bro. You're better than that. I need, I need a coffee refresh. All right, let's, let's, let, let, let's see him get his coffee. Let's bring on Austin Harrison, Chief it's Market pressure. Strategist at Grindstone Intelligence, and uh, try to talk about some, some charts. Yo. Jay, we've Make been friends for a long time. Make the call. I mean, this is pretty professional, guys. Nice, uh, nice show you got going here. What's up, Austin? How's it going, guys? Oh, no. you know, just, just you know, a little friendly banter in the morning, get the, get the I, blood flowing, you know? I could listen to you guys argue about the Dow uh, indexes all day. So You want to weigh in? Come on. You want to tell I the mean, kids? T tell the kids, Austin. Come on. I mean, like you guys said, uh, the industrials and the transports are, are the two important ones. So, I mean, that's where it's at. That's what it is. <laughs> I, I will I will uh, agree with Straza that uh, – or was it you that just said that that they have indexes for for every single sector and industry? Yeah. yeah. So that those are definitely out there. I spend a lot of time with those. So. And the utility one is not anywhere near the most. Yeah, important not one. not super important. Not super important. But. Thank you. Appreciate it, Austin. See, look at this. Um, well, uh, I know that uh, Spencer mentioned that that we've got some some additional Dow Jones Industrial Average charts, but I'd Thank love you. to just kind of turn it to you. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you see out there? Yeah, I mean, I mean, number one, it's it's a bull market. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm. It is according being, to it is according to Barons, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Barons, I guess, knows what they're talking about. But I mean, S and P five hundred was hitting new all time highs on Friday. Um, can't have new all time highs in a downtrend. So, you know, this is a bull market. I'm I'm a trend follower. I'm not in the business of, of predicting tops or calling tops and bottoms. So, uh, you know, until I see clear and convincing evidence that uh, we've got a, a reversal at hand, you know, I'm, I'm going to treat this like a bull market. So. And, and what do you think, what do you think makes, gives you that conviction that this is a bull market, um, you know, at the, uh, at the stock level. Right. Um, and what, what do you think it would take to maybe uh, bring some more caution to your approach? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, as far as, seen the the conviction that we're already there uh, or that we have are in a bull market we're already there um you know if we look at at the list of new or uh, new 52 week highs on the S&P 500 those peaked um you know back in December but uh you know we've been seeing uh, an increase in the number of new 52 week highs on on the S&P and the NYC and the Dow um really for the past month month and a half so you know I think you got that breadth thrust back in December. Um, you know, it's really hard to, to continue setting new 52 week highs when you have a breadth thrust like that. Um, yeah. So we have, I guess what you've been calling it is, is kind of a stealth correction below the surface, but you know, now we're getting that increase and I think, I think we're there. Um, you know, and we really just haven't seen an increase in the number of new lows. Uh, I mean, you obviously can't, 
expect to see a bunch of new lows in the market um, when we're at all time highs. But even on a shorter term basis, you know, you guys had the the six month lows here. It's just been a ghost town, um, you know, all year. You haven't even surpassed what uh, what we were at in mid January. So uh, I'm just not seeing evidence of a reversal. Uh, I think if we were looking for somewhere, um, it would be on the Dow, um, you know, breaking back below those uh, those 2022 highs, those January 22 highs. If we see the failed breakout. Um, then, yeah, we can start talking uh, about, you know, reversal in, the, in a downtrend, but we're just not there. So the January 22 highs, call it around 36, 36, 4, 36, 5. Yeah. And I mean, you can look at the Dow, you can look at the S&P, you can look at the, the NASDAQ too. That that same level works for all three. So, yeah, we're looking at um, some of the individual sectors as well. Uh, when you look at the New York Stock Exchange Broker Dealers Index, when you look at the industrial sector, S&P industrial sector, XLI, semiconductors, you know, home builders, it's just, they're all the same story that you're saying. Right, right. They're, I mean, risk on areas are setting new highs. Um, there's just not much to complain about. Yeah, and I really like, um, you know, you're, you're, I love how you brought up the six-month lows, right? Because I think a lot of people are looking for the 52-week lows. Like, for what? You know what I mean? Right. Like, have you seen the movie Frozen? And, oh yeah, um, I've seen it many right, times. You've seen it many times. And uh, Olaf in the like in the summer, like in the summertime, you know the Olaf scenes where he's like dancing oh, yeah. in the summer. That's like looking at the new fifty-two week lows list when the market's making new fifty-two week highs. Like there's just nothing that doesn't make any sense, right? Right. So you know you brought up the six month low list. I couldn't agree more. You can even say the three month lows list. You can throw the one month lows list there, and they're all gonna. It's all gonna tell you the same thing. There are no lows. And you right. cannot have a correction mathematically of any kind without stocks going down in price. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I didn't send a chart over, but, you know, I look at uh, the list of three month lows and then, you know, by sector and basically create a breadth kind of index of, you know, how many stocks have set a more high, a new three, new three month high more recently than they've set a new three month low. And it's like, Almost 90% of the S&P 500 has set a new three-month high more recently than the new three-month low. Yep. Um, you know, it can't have a bear market without stocks going down. So, uh, What about uh, technology? So, fun fact, technology represents 30% of the S&P 500, represents 50% of the NASDAQ 100. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the most important sector in the index, period. Um, you know, and, and when I'm looking at it... Uh, you know, we're running into to potential resistance here at the the 161.8 percent retracement from the entire uh, 2022 bear market. Um, you know, at the same time, you've got this potential bearish momentum divergence shaping up on uh, on the RSI. So, you know, if if uh, if we're going to top out in tech, this seems like a pretty logical place to do it. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to you know go and crash 20 percent from here. We could work this off with, uh, you know, some sideways action. Um, but, you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see tech stall out here for a little while. And it's interesting, you're looking at the uh, the sector index itself versus the ETF, because the ETF's not quite there yet. Right. Uh, it's, the it's sector index so. itself is. Any any reason why, you, do you prefer the indexes versus the sectors? I'd love to hear your thoughts there. Yeah, I, I prefer the indexes myself. Um, you know, there's no impact of fee there. Um, you know, it, the, uh, the alternative view, I guess, is that, uh, this index is not actually traded, but you know, all the, the underlying, uh, constituents are. So, you know, I prefer the indexes. It also really helps if I'm looking at, you know, relative strength ratio charts, um, you know, different ETFs can have different fee structures on there. So I like looking at the, the indexes themselves. I love the fact that you're talking about the uh, equally weighted S&P versus the cap weighted. You're looking at uh, value versus growth. Seems to be yep. a very similar story happening there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, if, uh, you know, the, the argument all last year was that breadth was weak because the equally weighted index was underperforming the S&P 500. I mean, it just that narrative didn't really hold up. It wasn't, you know, uh, a breadth problem. It was just you know, different leadership, um, you know, all the, the biggest stocks in the S&P are, are all growth stocks. Um, so when growth stocks are outperforming, you know, the cap weighted index is going to outperform. Um, you know, if 
during that uh, that bear market of 2022 as the value stocks leading. Um, you know, in that same same regime, you had uh, the equally weighted index outperforming. Um, you know, if we are going to see tech stall out here, it you know, wouldn't wouldn't shock me to see value step in here and take a leadership role for sure. But yeah, I think relationship is pretty clear that it's not really a breath story or a size story. It's just a kind of a market rotation story. So if these two lines stop falling, small caps are outperforming large caps. I think that would uh, that would make a lot of sense. You know, the small cap space. Uh, if you look at you know, the two biggest underweights in the small caps are tech and communication services. Um, those are your two leaders on the growth side, and you know, your biggest sectors are, I think, industrials and financials on the small caps. So, you know, if, uh, if financials can step in here and take a leadership role, then yeah, sure, small caps outperform. When you talk about the underweighted, I'm sorry, Spencer. When you talk about the underweighted, you're comparing it to the weightings in the large caps, right? Yeah, to, to the S&P 500. So yeah. like if you look at the Russell 2000 tech exposure versus the S&P tech exposure, it's half, for example. That's what you right. mean. Right, and there's virtually like no communication services in, in the Russell 2000. Right. And the ones that I, are have nothing to do with Google and Facebook. Right, they're, yeah. They're like <laughs> they're actual actually, communications. Like, yeah, they're telecom companies. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> Wait, I, I want to bring up this uh, regional bank chart. This is interesting to me here. Um, just because every day, another headline, regional bank this, New York community bank that, commercial real estate this, uh, bank failure that. Uh, but So this slide 14 here, yeah, this interests me. What are you seeing out here, Austin? Yeah, so this is the S&P 500 regional banks. Um, you know, if we looked at KRE or KBE or something like that, it would look completely different. But, you know, these are the most important regional banks i mean these are the biggest these are the ones that are in the large cap index and even with all these nasty headlines like we never even broke last summer's uh swing highs like you're not seeing any weakness really in the regional banks and you know again like that's your biggest risk area supposedly in the market and uh those guys aren't going down if you can't even keep down the weakest guys in the market um you know again it's a bull market so what is there to complain about? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Austin, um, what, can you uh, can you tell a little bit about, uh, tell the folks through what lens you view the market, like your day job, like from what perspective do you come, right? Because everybody's doing something different. Everyone has different time horizons, financial advisors, traders at hedge funds, right? What, where, yep. where, do you, where do you look at things through? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I write, a daily newsletter uh, with Grindstone Intelligence, um, really just trying to help folks stay on on the right side of the market. Um, I try to stick to three core themes there: you know, trend following, relative strength, risk management. Um, you know, with trend following, kind of already covered it, but I like buying up trends. I don't like buying down trends. Um, not not trying to predict tops and bottoms. Um, Want to see that clear and convincing evidence of of reversals first. Um, as far as relative strength goes, um, you know, I do come from, uh, you know, my day job is at an advisor here in Kansas City, Mater Chain and Wealth Management. So I, I view the market through the lens of an asset allocator, um, you know, looking weeks to months, um, even as much as years on time frame, not a day trader. But, you know, as an asset allocator, you know, we have limited at, uh, limited capacity, so we can't own everything. So, you know, there's always opportunity cost in whatever we own. Um, you know, I never want to be trying to build a portfolio of saying, oh, here's a great chart. Let's get a little of that. Here's a great chart. Let's get a little of that. I want to be knowing, you know, how's that comparing to what else I could own? Is it, you know, equities versus fixed income or equities versus commodities? Or, you know, if I'm in equities, how is tech doing relative to the rest of the market? Or, you know, how is energy doing relative to tech? Um, I you know, always want to be focusing on uh, on relative strength and then risk management. Um, you know, obviously, nobody likes losing money, so that's an important part. But when I say risk management, I'm also talking like risk management of a thesis. So you know, whether I'm bullish or bearish, or I like equities or, or commodities or whatever it is, I always want to know, you know where's that thesis no longer correct. Um, you know, they always say it's it's okay to be wrong, but it's not okay to stay wrong. But, you know, if you don't if you don't know ahead of time 
where it is that you're wrong, then it's it's hard to do. So g- give us give us some general rules of thumb there that you follow for when you might reassess your thesis. Yeah, and, and I want to reiterate what he just said, right? Because we talk about a lot of risk management for a, sport, a particular trade, you know, like, oh, we own the call option, so there's your risk management. You could add another layer on top of that, but at the very least, you can't lose more than what you invest because the call option or, you know, if, if we buy a breakout in, like Strazo was talking about the Russell 2000, IWM, if it's below 200, that trades off the table, right? So those are specific trades. So can you, to Spencer's point, can you, like, contextualize, I love this sort of philosophy of uh, a, a, a general thesis. It could be interest rates higher. It could be, you know, energy rotation into energy. It could be whatever. Um, but having, and it's probably not just one thing, right, Austin? It's probably right. things that would invalidate a particular thesis. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we talked about uh, in kind of the thesis right now. This is a bull market. Uh, of where do we reassess on that? Um, you know, with failed breakouts in, in your Dow and your NASDAQ and, uh, you know, your, your S and P 500 below those 2022 highs, but, you know, a couple of rules of thumb, uh, for me are if you've got something trading above a rising long-term moving average, it cannot be in a downtrend. Um, so, you know, if you're ignoring, you know, those, those trailing indicators, then you're on the wrong side. You know, if you're below a falling moving average, you cannot be in an uptrend. Um, so those are are the clear and convincing that, hey, I, I'm doing something wrong here. Um, but then, it's, you know, it's just kind of a weight of the evidence approach. Um, you know, there's there's never we w- never want to be putting too much on on one particular indicator. It's, you know, a body of evidence, um, you know, just just over time. So doing this doing this every day and, and making sure we're doing all the work underneath the surface. So. Are you from Kansas City? Uh, so I grew up in central Missouri, uh, small town, but yeah, they, got, I they K- got those there, right? Yeah, they got, they got a few of those there. So, but yeah, I'm in Kansas city now. And what's up with the, there's quite the community of financial professionals in Kansas city. Um, I mean, just so many, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's huge. Uh, creative planning is based out of Kansas city. Yeah. So that, that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, Does it, is that like, kind of like the, does it kind of like revolve around that? Cause they're so big. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it kind of has to, so to a certain extent, they're huge. So, but yeah, how long have I mean, they been around now? I don't have the answer. But yeah. hockey stick in terms of AUM. Yeah, they're they're just growing like crazy. So credit that, to them. that attracts other financial professionals, and it kind of builds the ecosystem around that. You think that would, that, that that really has had a big impact on the community, huh? I would think so. Yeah, that's yeah. really interesting. Um, and uh, your baseball player, I see that in your background. Yeah, former. former. Former, yeah, I'm I'm long since retired, so I haven't thrown a baseball in a couple of years. But uh, yeah, I did oh, have the is opportunity. That you, is that you celebrating there? No, that is uh, when the Cardinals <laughs> no. walked off with David Fries. So, ooh, game oh, six. Yeah, that was, that was yes. a great one. Um, watching yeah. that from a oh, college yes. dorm room with a bunch of other baseball guys. But where'd you go to school? Uh, small small school of Benedictine College up north of Kansas City. You played so, ball? Yeah, I got to I got to pitch there for a couple of years. So. All right. What you uh, would you top out at? Uh, we shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, sh- I'll I'll show you know I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Yeah, I think uh, on my best day I was probably living 85, 86. Beat me. So. I had 84, and I think I had the wind behind me on that day. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think... So you got me beat. <laughs> a lot that's, of off speed. That's why we're here it. talking about the stock market and not pitching yeah. in the bigs. That's right. You know, a lot of off speed, a lot of a lot of location. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was a poor man's Greg Maddox. And by poor man, I mean like homeless, you know. <laughs> really, <laughs> really, man. really. Yeah. Dude, I heard a stat yeah. the other day. Yeah. Um, so Greg Maddox, uh, he he faced 20,000 hitters over his career, right? Of those 20,000 hitters, he only had a 3-0 count like 300 times. And of those 300 times, 170 of them were intentional walks. That's insane. Isn't that yeah. crazy, dude? That's absolutely crazy crazy i just read that stat yesterday because i was talking about my father-in-law so it's fresh in my head Isn't that nuts that's yeah i can't even imagine so i probably went he was a freak of nature probably went three oh that many times in my college yeah. career so and he was a prankster too i don't know if you guys know this about him i've heard a lot of stories from some pro baseball players over the years and uh he was he was bad like disgusting pranks like he would take your shoe your your cleat and take it into the bathroom and do his business and then put the shoe back in your locker like 
He was, oh, na- no. he was a nasty dude. <laughs> that's, that's messed up. That's, that's disgusting. Uh, that's Austin, good. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you one more question before we let you go. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about energy. You know, I know you like to think about big picture themes, right? You're thinking weeks and months. I love that. Um, what what are the chances? You know, when, when, when at the end of the year, uh, when we look back at the best performing groups for 2024, things like that. Uh, you think energy is going to be closer to the top of that list, closer to the bottom of that list, maybe near the middle? What do you think? Yeah, I'm not sold on it. Um, you know, if we look at S&P, or, uh, S&P 500 sector energy relative to the S&P 500, um, you know, I'm looking at resistance. You know, we're below the, the 2022 and 2023 lows. Um, as long as that's the case, I just I just can't see energy as a leader. Um, for me, crude oil looks range bound. Yeah. Um, it's just a giant mess. You know, if we're breaking out to the upside, sure. For for crude oil, like sure, we can get behind energy. Um, but yeah, I just I don't see it right now. And what about uh, what about what about oh, tips? Kind of hanging in there, outperforming uh, the last few months. You know. Yeah. It's, still still kind of range bound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, within the fixed income world, the thing that I find it interesting is. Uh, I think I saw it this weekend that HYG breaking out. Yeah. Um, again, just just further confirmation of a bull market in my view. Like, if uh, would you consider that HYG an actual breakout though? Uh, I guess. I mean, we're still I mean, below those former highs. Yeah, we are still below those former highs, but um, you know, it's new three month highs, right? I guess not uh, quite two month highs. No, it's still still below. No. Still, no. I, I may have I may have my chart on the wrong setting here. Yeah, still up. below. It's still below the February highs. Gotcha. Okay. Well, um, it's definitely not breaking down. Holy it's definitely that. not breaking down. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. exactly right. And you know, when you look at credit spreads, you know, high yield spreads, you know, I mean, technically, mathematically, high yield doesn't have to break down for those spreads to widen. But right. if spreads are going to widen, I'm thinking the high yield bonds are probably breaking down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And we and haven't yeah, gotten that. To your point, like credit spreads, just not showing any sign of uh, of risk aversion out there. No, not at all, uh, and, and or a lack of new lows in the equities market. So no expansion in new lows in the stock market. Credit spreads are as narrow as they've been in forever, and uh, no breakdown in high-yield bonds. So if you are bearish and you think the stock market's going to go down, I would be looking for an expansion in new lows, and I would be looking for a breakdown in high-yield bonds. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think you're you're right do, on. Do you think energy is defensive? Do you think if we do get um, you know, maybe a correction into Q2 or something like that, energy outperforms in that environment or energy goes with it? I don't I don't think it's defensive. I think energy just kind of does its own thing. Um, you know, it was you could call it defensive during 2022 um because it outperformed, but I don't think that was like people But it was mo- it was mostly doing its own thing then. Right. right. Yeah. It wasn't because, right. you know, the rest of the market was selling off that energy was was screaming. It was right. doing its own thing. Um, so, yeah, I just treat it on its own for me. Any any just because, you know, we're on the topic and, uh, you know, Bitcoin's making new all time highs. And, you know, you, you mentioned earlier that new all time highs are not something you see in downtrends. Uh, any any thoughts here on Bitcoin from an asset allocation standpoint? How do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, you can't be bearish Bitcoin if it's above 70. Um you know, end of story for me, uh, for, for, but back below, um, you know, from like a near term kind of tactical, uh, staying, uh, point of view, like, sure. You can, you can be on the sidelines, you know, maybe see a pullback back to like that 45, 46 area. Um, I don't think that would negate kind of the longer term structure there, but, uh, I mean, like I said, if we're both, we're above 70, then you know, there's nothing to complain about there. Yeah, but we could be below 70 we tomorrow. Could be below, like we could be below 70 time. by the end of this conversation. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's not, that's not a. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, uh, time frame is, I mean, is what matters there. Um, yeah. You know, right. if you're super long term, um, you know, sure, you can you can continue betting on uh, or holding it through that. Uh, you know, for me, if I was, you know, from a tactical point of view, I just wouldn't want to be in it below 70, period. Like, yeah, fair. All right, Austin Harrison, Chief Market Strategist, Grindstone Intelligence. The links to his Twitter and to his site are both in the description on YouTube. Check them out, Austin. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you guys for having me. Have you back? It was great. Yeah.
The only awesome. bummer is that I agree with him way too much. You know, clearly, clearly him and I uh, have similar uh, market experiences and, and trained in similar ways. All right, fine. Do you want me to get people that I think you'll disagree no, with? No, I, I just, that. you know, he, he's the man. I agree. With, I mean, I, I don't disagree with a word that came out of this man's mouth. You know, um, what about... Um, what about this whole Kansas City situation, huh? When are we going to KC? I want to go to a Royals game so bad, dude. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, What's KC. I was, I, I was, I was in KC once. It's a cool town. It's a cool town. I've never been. Yeah, get some ribs. Go catch a ball game. Like that sounds like a fantastic day in my life. You no, know? meet up with some market nerds. You know, talk gotta, about markets. Got to eat some barbecue, obviously. Oh, I, about I the... started with ribs. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, duh. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're talking um, about the bustling financial community in KC. Hey, I'm I'm actually really impressed, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Kansas City, Missouri. Just to be clear, not Missouri? Yeah. Not Kansas. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Although throughout Kansas, you know, you do have, you know, in uh, in Manhattan, Manhattan, Kansas, uh, the Little Apple, as they call it. Right. Oh, There's... Yeah. Well, it's a college town, but. Um, hey. Okay. On the topic of Bitcoin, shout out to uh, MicroStrategy doing what they do. What about buy, it? Come on. buying twelve thousand more Bitcoins? <laughs> Michael Michael Saylor was on uh, CNBC at eight thirty, but I oh. couldn't. Yeah. Oh well, I'm sure he's talking about how they made. Well, in that case, he must be important. Um, I like to hear yeah. what he's. You know, I'm sure they would ask him a couple good questions at least about buying more at all time highs. Um. Well, First of all, Sailor's going to be a legend no matter what, whether he blows up everything, which makes him a legend, or mm -hmm. uh, he he was right all along and he makes a fortune, also legendary status. So he's already locked it in. You know, he's either going to be famous or infamous. Yeah. In no, he, the I, infamous El Guapo. I, is it is the, the story is almost pretty much over, uh, in my opinion. But yeah. What, what story? I, that's definitely not the top. What story? He's dude. He's a legend. Even like I don't know what. Yeah. Oh, 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 wait. His story. Oh, okay. Either way, even what Bitcoin draws down fifty percent from here, they're still winning, dude. They're so they're so. Yeah. Winning. Where was he getting knocked oh, out? He was getting knocked out around seventeen thousand, something like that. Also at yeah. the low, literally the week after the FTX blow up, it was like, oh, MicroStrategy is going to default on their loans, which was like the craziest. Yeah. That was so mm -hmm. shout out. I mean. The, the meme of uh, the meme of him, uh, I tweeted it out uh, of Michael Saylor walking into MicroStrategy's office. I'm pretty sure they don't even have an office. <laughs> what 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 purpose would that serve? Right, employees <laughs> what for an, what? What do you need an office for? Yeah, you need lawyers and accountants. That's it. That's all you need. Right. Uh, right. Sure. You know who else um, was on Squawk Box this morning? I no. do not. No. First time. First time in a long time. Donald Trump. Oh. Donald Trump. They were people were just talking about in, in that Trump is into yeah. Bitcoin. For the record, Maybe the Trump and the about. Biden are both into Bitcoin. Neither one of them know a lick of what Bitcoin is, but both of them yeah. know that there are huge communities that want to make sure that who they're voting for is into Bitcoin. Let's be. Let's just keep that in mind. Neither one of them know a damn thing. Yeah. It's just you know, convenient to be into Bitcoin now going into an election, is it not? I think it was. It, but guess what? It was just as convenient, if not more, four years ago. Because that idiot was throwing crazy amounts of money at both parties. Which idiot? SBF. <laughs> oh, so he made like like historic campaign donations. This guy. Uh, so yeah. I don't. Well, I don't easy, easy, easy to do. Money. Easy to do when it's not your money. Yeah, that's also true. Well, very true. <laughs> easy to spend when it's I not would yours. be very good at spending other people's money if you know if I had to, I'd figure out a way to to order extra uni and uh, you know. That's right. That's right. All right, uh, nine thirty-one here. We're not going to be joined by Ian Cully today. We'll have to save the what the fit conversations for next week. Uh, but the market is open. Uh, JC, do you want to do another quick rundown of where things stand as we as, as the horses get off and running here? And then I, I got some stuff to talk about. And there's probably uh -huh. it's, it's really slow news day, right, Spencer? Like we got. Oh my gosh, incredibly slow. Um, yeah. So let's shall we? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Go for it. it. 
So Dow Futures, uh, Dow Futures down 70 points off the lows of the day. Uh, it's about 20 basis points. s and is down the same, about 11 handles. Uh, NASDAQ Futures leading the way lower, down 50 basis points, down about 100 points. Yeah. 30-year bond futures hanging in there just fine. Um, positive once again. Silver flat, gold flat. Uh, copper up almost 1%. Oil down almost 1%. Dollar mix in early trading. Uh, volatility index, uh, 15 Point six on the VIX. Um, uh, U.S. ten-year yield hanging out just under four point one percent. Of course, in the old funny money, uh, Bitcoin up thirty-one hundred points, uh, hovering above seventy-two thousand. Uh, Ethereum uh, up one hundred seventy-five points, four and a half percent, right around four thousand and fifty. Um, nice, uh, nice, nice weekend for cryptocurrencies hanging in there, consolidating. Can they stick the landing, Straza? Do you think they stick it? I think so. I think so. Breath you is know, expanding in, in a really real way beneath the surface. I'll, I'll, I'll mention one more thing. Um, you know, when we talk about former resistance and we talk about the last time that Bitcoin was up at these levels in the high 60s, there was more supply than demand. There were more sellers than buyers, right? Facts only, right? That's why prices went down. So when we're coming back to these levels, the question is, well, how long is it going to take for demand to absorb overhead supply? We know it's, it's going to need to do so. How long is it going to take? My thoughts have been, well, there's a new vehicle for all this demand to come in and absorb overhead supply that was not present last time we were here in terms of the uh, all the Bitcoin ETFs. There yeah. are now more institutions that can yeah, there's position more. them. There's, there's more demand opportunities than last time. So theoretically, yeah. it, should be, it, it should be able to happen quicker than a, a situation where that's not the case, all things being equal, right? It speeds up the absorption process. Oh. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's, it's like the quicker picker upper. Like the the quill, the quicker picker upper. And we talk about this, and you always right. tell me that my grandma doesn't matter, which is mean, but there are just more <laughs> buyers now. Nobody right? said your grandma doesn't matter. I'm sure yeah, she's a very nice lady. Institutions, right? My point is, there's just a lot more buyers right now. So, so I'm not hating on grandma. I'm not hating on grandma. Sure, she's lovely. I'm sure she. She hook up, hook up a nice meal. Too. Yeah, it, it's it's never been easier for anyone in right. America to buy Bitcoin. Listen, right, this but, was a yeah. real thing. And JC, you know this. Like, there were people who would have been down to buy some Bitcoin, but they just wanted to be able to do it in their Fidelity account. They, yeah, they those, weren't going to ever use Coinbase. They heard all the horror stories about FTX. But that's FTX. their problem. But that's their problem. But, that, but they, they're people, not, the people who are scared to go on the blocking chain are not going to move the prices higher. The I think people that are going to move the prices higher are the institutions. Because the institutions were those people. No. They weren't going to do it either. They, well, they yes. weren't allowed to do it. No. They weren't allowed to do it. No, no they wanted, no, 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 they wanted no, a trusted no. counterparty like BlackRock or Fidelity or somebody like that in the space. They didn't want to deal with a Coinbase or an FTX or Binance. In some cases, I would agree. It's they preferred True. that. In True. most cases, they just were not allowed. Yeah. First of all, first of um, all, when you say not allowed, you're talking about RIA. Mandates. Yeah. Asset no, managers. Talking about hedge the, funds, pension yeah, funds, uh, family offices, the mutual funds. The companies like real money. These these financial institutions. I'm not talking about the people who manage assets for them. They can go buy Bitcoin and stuff no. it, stuff it in their treasury if they want nope, to. They yeah, cannot. they could. Nope. And they are. They have been. No, no, they could not. I don't know what you're talking about. They absolutely could have. Fidelity did it. Fidelity did it years ago. Straza. <sighs> anyway, all right. All right. Yeah, moving on. I this is a, a, wrong, a debate bro, take with the no. L. You're wrong. This debate has no correct answer, really, because you're just both How speaking in a row. I am correct. He's saying dumb shit. I am correct. Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I got it, charts. It, I feel like you're both right and wrong. Uh, well, I, I I just want to mention Nvidia real fast uh, after the day it had yesterday. I know. Yes, thank uh, you. I have charts for this. I have charts for people, this. Throw up the okay, good. Bring them up. People love to focus on at, you know focus on a hot How spots. Is this not in the Dow. I mean, after big on. down days, it's gonna yeah, be next. Well, I think. They got to split gonna, first, though, right? They're gonna jump the Google. They're gonna jump the Google in terms of getting into the Dow first. Yeah, but the, the Google yeah. already split. NVIDIA has not. So they, the they split's got to come first. They yeah. can do that tomorrow. The, right. But they, they have to wait. Uh, the Dow just made a new decision. Yeah, but there's no rhyme or reason as to when they do that. Uh, yeah, all right. Well, they don't. Yeah, okay. I guess. Uh, so go, Spencer, I love this conversation. I can't wait yeah. to share my thoughts. Okay. Um, you go. 
Unless you want me to say, here, oh, I guess here, 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 here's all I'll say about NVIDIA. Um, I'm always mindful of uh, when there is some kind of a potential catalyst down the road. And in NVIDIA's case, they have their big AI developer conference that starts on um, a month, next Monday, next, next week, all week, next week is, or the first half next week is this big fancy schmancy conference for AI developers. I'm sure they're going to unveil, unveil a ton of shit. Um, and I'm always mindful of things like that, that are going to be in the news later. So keep that in the back of your mind. Strasic, go for it. Catalysts. Yes. Hmm. All right. I'm sh I'm shocked that I'm the one bringing this up as as you know my, my co-host seems to be looking so hard for every little you know insignificant piece of bearish information. I have not said one bad thing about semiconductors or Nvidia all year. My point is maybe there might be something bad to say right now. This is your moment, right? So I'm all my moment. Myself. I don't have I don't have a horse in the race for the record. And number two, oh, sure. number two, one day does not make a trend. No horses. Yes. All right. Yes. Fine. I'm always when I'm flipping through my charts, I'm saying, is this how bad things start? This is one of those, this is how bad things start charts. Show the one day rate of change to semiconductors Friday. And you didn't know this if you just looked at your account in the morning and then, I don't know, went golfing. You had no idea. AMD, NVIDIA, they were up three, four, five, six percent in the morning. Hard reversals. Worst day since December of 2022 been over a year you know since semis have really just puked like that if you look at these candles we have these you know nosebleed almost vertical uptrends uh with just these monster bearish engulfers and if we get follow through today you're right one day doesn't make a trend but follow through today probably doesn't feel so good uh for this group over yeah, the short maybe time. yeah maybe but you gotta see follow through one day does not make a trend and you know what i used to do when i was a lot yes. younger and stupid i used to think that one day made a trend and that was it, that was tough living no one's, saying that. no one's saying that you're you're arguing with no one right but this is how i'm not, I'm not having are. making an argument i am i am i am ha we're having a discussion about yeah. one day's action but try to the other end of your point though if you do uh see a, a you know buy the dip type thing happen today then that throws any negative thing you could say out the window. And that's the and that's the highest probability outcome is that you yeah. do get green candles today and don't get follow yeah. through, right? Yeah. Because trends Probably. tend to persist. So but it's an it's an uptrend and NVIDIA hasn't hit our upside target yet. If you get a nasty red candle today in some of these semiconductor charts, just go flip through a couple of them. Like AMD looks the same, maybe probably worse. Also, don't you guys like don't you guys like buying strong stocks on weakness? Isn't that what the, is this is this not that? Well, I, don't what, want, I wouldn't say one no. day is weakness. Five percent is not nothing. It's not nothing. It I kind would of is. A in green video today. I guess you could buy, but I wouldn't want to buy a red candle today because that's confirmation of the bearish engulfing uh, from last week. Yeah, let's yeah. be serious. Five percent. Let's put that into context, Spencer. No, right. But again, this this could yeah. be. We could look back at that candle, that little short term bearish momentum thrust. And say, oh, this was the beginning of a multi-week, multi-month corrective period for semiconductors and maybe more broadly large cap tech, because I doubt that semiconductors are going to move in a different direction than the Nasdaq 100. Or keep technology. keep in mind, keep in mind this. Let's put this five percent into context. It is March the 11th, and know, Nvidia up 70, is, I, Nvidia I is up 76 percent this yeah. year. I know. Great. I know. Fine. I know. But so this is still five percent is nothing. I get, it, I get it. Outside day, outside day, bearish engulfing, yeah. nasty reversal, melted candle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what isn't nothing? 10%? Is that not nothing? I mean, did NVIDIA lose 20% like in two seconds uh, last year and then came back and went out to make new all-time highs? Listen, we see this all the time. And in yeah. bull markets, most of the time, you get a candle like this and you get no follow-through at all. You get a nice big green stick. They, they just buy the dip right away. Yeah. Uh, but... Also, this is how maybe a corrective wave starts too. You see no that way too. So I'm just saying, caught my mind, you know, caught my eye. I will be paying extra close attention to how these stocks, Actually. you know, fare out here today. Today we so. could be having the same. We could be having the same conversation, just replacing Nvidia with Japan. Yeah, great. Fine. It's the same uh, then, exact conversation. Not yet, right. though. Listen, I want to talk about international stocks. By the way, we did. We have gotten reversal. We have gotten continuation and follow through in Japan. For the record. Okay, fine then. Just 
We're still talking about Simmons. Equal weight, uh, the XSD chart. The broader group, and this is a problem for tech tech stocks in general, this whole bull market. Uh, JC, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Tech is not industrials. There's a reason why we come on here and we sound a lot different when we're talking about industrials and we say they're the true generals, right? Technology indexes, and in this case, semiconductors, don't look nearly as good on an equal weight basis or even more true when you move down the cap scale on a small cap basis. So this is equal weight semiconductors. It doesn't look anything like SMH. Actually, not above those prior cycle highs yet. Uh, so this is kind of an ugly chart, not getting that confirmation of the new highs from, from our momentum indicator. That's the daily RSI 14 in the lower pane. So this one's kind of set up, again, for some you know counter trend price action in the coming weeks to months, I would say. And I don't think any of this is a cause for concern if we do get that bearish follow through today and we do get a corrective wave for semis, large cap tech more broadly. Uh, I think you look at stuff like industrials, financials, materials, healthcare, other stuff continues to work really well. Uh, can we just talk very quickly about how a one Spencer Israel just randomly throws out Japan stock market like nice little Monday? Nobody you don't care about anything I'm saying about semis. You just want to talk about Japan? <laughs> Fuck. I already well, said he's about semis. Nasty reversal on Friday. Let's see if they follow through. Let them dance. The Nikkei, on the other hand, has been dancing, uh -huh. right? Um, and fun fact, the Nikkei is now back below the highs from 1989 for those who are keeping score at home. And by the way, can we give a shout out Good to Spencer? Deal. Deal. Shout out to, to Spencer. Yes. Yeah. You need, to fix your, you need to fix that. That sounds terrible. Don't do that anymore. What? What? What's happening now? That's not terrible. Audio. I I, yeah. I, zo I zoned out there. What's happening? The I Japanese guess. Nikkei, the one you just brought up, um, oh, okay. which I'm giving you kudos for. Oh, that's probably why I zoned out. That's when I zoned out. Yeah. Um, he's like Spencer's. Like, wait a minute. I'm getting compliments around here. <laughs> um, no, it, no. It, look, I you come in. I, I come in this morning, and first thing I notice is all the Japanese stocks are down. That's yeah, the first thing I saw. Too. Look at slide two. Japanese Nikkei back below those former highs. The exact high on the Nikkei uh, was 38,957. Here we are at 38,300. You got to be patient with a chart like this. We've seen this one too many times, actually, for, for what a beautiful chart structure it is. But full of false starts. 34-year uh, 34, 34 whipsaw. Yeah, listen. If this doesn't go the first time, I don't think you freak out. Look at how strong this trend has been for, for such a long time now. Uh, off the, what, 20, 2008 financial crisis lows, 2009. So uh, I think you just got to be patient with this. The, these stocks have been so good. Is there a better country outside the U.S. than Japan, this whole bull market? No. Not even close. <sighs> no. Not That's, that I can think of. Not even close. Right, JC? Who's close? And I'm not talking about like I'm sorry, Argentina and stuff like. There's weird stuff going on in some of these uh, EMs, but in Japan. Uh, and the right. worst. So, is so, China. so okay. So don't freak out if we retrace a little bit here. All right, I I'm with you. It's I'm not about saying. freaking out. It is just um, interesting to note that Japan is not breaking out of a 34-year base, but in fact is actually failing at the same levels that it failed at in 1989 and listen we could talk about this too there are really good things wait like, but both the wait huh? that's oh, both oh. those things are true jc what things which things the base and the and the breakout well what? it failed it didn't break out what now what? Nikkei did not break out it failed well one one day does not make a trend a uh, agreed agreed it's been a week one week all right I like what Strauss has said about more, but continue, Steve. Sorry. In a week. I agree. One day does not make a trend. That's why we weren't talking about this on the first day. We're talking about this a week later. All what other right. point, Strauss? I don't know. What, what, what were you just about to say? And then I interrupted you. I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're going with that. I got bad data here. I'm having a data issue. Uh, throw up no. chart three, four. There are other groups that we can look to or other international indexes and say, oh, oh. wow, there's a lot of strength there also, right? Trying to get the Germany one as well. Here's Germany. Bullish Ireland. By the way, these are priced in dollars, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So these this, are isn't like, this isn't like some like Fugazi currency or something like that, you know? Yeah, no. These are the MSCI funds. Uh, yeah. Anybody can go out and buy them. These are the iShares funds. 
The point is, though, it's not just Japan making new highs, right? Like we're starting to see strength broaden. We're talking about strength broadening in the U.S. I think a, a, a bigger, may, maybe even more important development is seeing that same kind of strength broaden around the world. And, you know, more and more participation from whether it's these Southeast Asian countries, finally, you know, China finally showing some evidence of maybe bottoming. I think that would be a huge deal. But then there's old leaders in developed Europe, whether it's Germany, uh, that just keep working, you know, sideways for almost a year now, breaking out of this, you know, nice little range continuation pattern. So breath expansion outside the U.S. It's bull market stuff. It's very much bull market stuff. Bullish Ireland, uh, Killian Murphy, Irish yeah. actor, just just one best actor. Very bullish Ireland. Let's go Ireland. Oh, the um, what? So the Oscars, right? The Oscars yeah. is like the Grammys, but for for movies. So who? What was the? Was it like the Killers of the Sunflower Moon? Uh, Flower Moon, and no, it was Oppenheimer uh, ruled the day. Oh yesterday. yeah, yeah. that was that that was like a shoe in for the win. Spencer yeah, liked Oppen it when John Cena came out naked. Did he? You did. I mean, I, I thought it was on the Twitter. I, I thought it was a funny bit. It was a funny bit. It actually made me chuckle. And I, I that was going to be my recess, but whatever. We'll do it now. I don't usually watch like these things. I haven't for years. But I actually watched the Oscars last night, and you know, I had a good time. It was entertaining. They entertained me for I don't know, and not ninety. Who was the host? Ago. Who was the host? Jimmy Kimmel. He's he's whatever. He's totally he's middle of the road. He's fine. But uh, you're you know, talking to the British guy, the guy from The Office. What's his name? Yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't been. He hasn't hosted for for a minute. Um, oh. No, man. I you know Oppenheimer. I'm, you know, I I like rooting for the movies that I that I that I've seen. So I was rooting for Oppenheimer. I was rooting for um, Society of the Snow, which unfortunately did not win anything. I think, but it's oh, I gotta movie. see that. I gotta watch that. I've been meaning to watch that. It's good, dude. Yes, good. I talked about it on Friday. Oh my gosh, was it good? Oh, okay. still good. I watch that. Can't wait. Yeah, watch it not in English. Do the subtitles. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we watched a weird movie that was pretty good. You ever you ever heard of this poor thing? We had to rent it. That that they had winning awards last night, and I was like, "What is the movie? I've never even heard of it before." Dude, strange movie. Incredible. Dude, very. I, you got to see it. See it. Do I? Uh, it seems weird, yeah. man. <laughs> very weird. Super. All right. Weird well, movie. they won like a, they won like four awards last night. Four or five awards. Um, I'm not surprised. Kept... It was excellent. Yeah. All great. right. Gosh, I don't. That's weird. You watch Whatever. that. All right, we'll watch the society of this stuff. All right. Let, let's do hot corner. Cool. Hit that was a fun little mid-show recess. Hot corner. So hot right now. So we got hmm? Archer Aviation, Spencer. What do you know about them? Yeah, uh, that's it. Was a spec, not anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And they're doing the, the uh, right? Th 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Short, like short distance chopper rides. Right, the, the, the Uber for helicopters. Yes, yes. Really that's cool. that. so, so Joby is also another spec daddy that I believe is working on similar uh, innovations. This seems like uh, Stellantis, like, like Chrysler. Yeah, yeah. I, right. Very uh, interesting yeah. that they're the ones filing. Want some skin in the game? Listen, so, it's it, so hold on, but and it's not nothing. No, it's serious cha cha. It's uh fifteen point six million dollars. Maybe for a company like Stellantis, it's not a lot, but it's a it, lot. It yeah, it's a lot. Um, I'm sure it's probably going to end up being more. What's the cap on? One point four. It's small. Not super 1. material. 1. Right. One point four uh, billion. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. What, 1%? Is that what that comes out to? It's like 15, right? Um, what's up with uh what's up with uh EcoStar Corporation? Why is your tick ticker symbol Sats? Does that have anything to do with Satoshi's? Star. That's a satellite it's, company. It's, the one that I'm more interested in here is Snowflake. So Mark McLaughlin, name ring a bell? No, I heard that name. I said, Mark, what do I know him from? Who is that? Um, former chief executive, chairman, yada, 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 Palo Alto Networks. Ooh. Uh, oh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Crazy guy. So obviously did some great things over there. Uh, Palo Alto, pretty much in one of the clear leadership spots uh, in this you know, bustling new industry that is cybersecurity. 
Snowflake is one that, you know, the street's really excited about. Uh, this was one of the hottest IPOs of the past few years. It's just a mess. Uh, what did they have? An executive departure, right, at the recent earnings? Either way, the market didn't like it. Back in the box here. Uh, but this guy's coming out buying a sizable amount of shares. And um, it's probably just good to have people like that on your board, especially when you're, you know, still kind of a startup like or newly public even in snowflakes case so this this purchase stands out a lot but just like the russell 2000 you need a 200 handle or two handle on this one it's got to be out of the box completing the trend reversal before you want to uh, really take a shot on the long side would you agree i mean i'm not touching this 200 is probably right i would say even 205 um and even then you got a gap fill this thing's got work to do Hey, if, if this thing wants JC as a shareholder, it's got to get its shit together first. You know, did you ever think we would still be talking about those August 2022 highs going on two years later? <laughs> you know, this looks a lot like the Russell 2000 chart you showed before. That was a clear breakout. It, was yeah. very, it actually looks very similar. Yeah. So listen, you want to show that again, Spencer, this clear breakout that Strauss is talking about in the Russell 2000 that happens to look exactly like this one? I'm at this point in the cycle. I'm looking for what I'm calling in my head late leaders. I want the late leaders, right? The early cycle leaders are not always the leaders of the entire cycle, right? Now show the snowflake, snowflake. Yeah, they're similar. But listen, this is the pattern, right? This is the pattern right here. This is the same one that we continue to buy. You want to see the relative trend look like this, but be breaking out to new highs. And you want to see the absolute trend doing the same at the same time, right? Because that to me says... There's a good chance here that this this one could continue leading over intermediate and long term time frames, right? Because it's completing a primary trend reversal versus the broader market that indicates more leadership or more outperformance in the future, and just completed a trend reversal on absolute terms. Checks both boxes. Those could be late cycle leaders. Those are the stocks I think you know. Those those are the best opportunities right now. That's what you want to be looking for. Could could you also like, and I think I know the answer to this, like fish around. The 52 big lows list, but wait, obviously, it's just a tougher trade. It's not yeah. that it and, won't and work. There, are, there aren't many of them, Spencer. So, yeah, if you're but, making the yeah, 52 week lows list, you really suck at life. I I've know done I've done it, but it's a different you want to trade it differently. You know, I see limited comes to mind. We were buying like the little scoop and the failed breakdown there with the idea that this will probably eventually look like a base, right? So, why don't we trade it up the right hand side of the base? It's choppier, it's messier. I like just going naked calls if the uh, implied vol is right for something like that. Which it generally isn't if it's making it for the two-week lows, by the way. So it's tough. Um, there's something there, but why not keep going back to the well, the same pattern, the same primary trend reversal that's continued to reward us for a year and a half now? Just it's the same playbook. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it up now. Um, I have a confession to make. Can we go to recess? No. Okay. Early recess. Early recess is 9.54. I got a good one. We, we can do recess, sure. A really, really good one. All right, so I'm in line. Uh, I'm in line for the sixth batch of the Rabbit R1. Mm -hmm. right. what, what is that? What, yeah, English. Uh, it's a little AI device. It's called a companion. What are you doing with that? So I am just playing with it. You know how I like to play with the toys. Um, but this particular device is an AI device that is not an app on your iPhone, but an actual separate piece of hardware that you hold in your hand. And it, it, the idea behind it is that it actually takes action. So it's not like chat GGP or all these other things that like they won't actually do something for you like an assistant. It'll just give you information or yeah. like, you know, stuff like that, right? Basically unprompted, this will like offer I mean, suggestions. Well, you also teach it over no, time and it gets it. to know you personally is my understanding. Uh, cool. But it, it, it connects to all your apps. So instead of having to go to your iPhone and be like, oh, let me go to Spotify and put on Biggie Smalls or whatever, it, it, could, it goes to my Spotify. It knows that Spotify would be my preferred playlist versus Pandora, let's just say. Uh, it knows that I use Uber, not Lyft. It knows I use Grubhub, not DoorDash. It knows that I use, right? You know, like it already has my preferred applications 
for a particular situation. So here's my confession. That's so cool. I was I was in the sixth batch uh, of shipping, right? So shipping is uh, Easter, is my understanding for the first batch. Oh, you don't so have I, it yet. So hold on. Yeah. So I got so desperate. Here's my confession. So desperate yeah. to get the new toy that I went to eBay yeah. and I paid double the amount uh. to be on the second batch. All right. So I'll get Where mine is- in. I'll get mine in April or May, is my understanding. I don't it, wait. It, like, it's cool, but it, like what you just described, I, it's got to be cooler than that because it kind of sounds like an Alexa. Well, to be fair, well, Alexa doesn't take action, and Alexa is dumb as rocks. Uh, so is the Google one, and so is the other one. Wait, All wait, can, can things- this can this take action with other devices? Is that what you're saying? Can it take action with yeah, other like devices, other things, dude? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. That's the whole point. It 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 works with it connects all your applications. Okay. By the way, just for the record, I am not an expert at AI or tech technology devices. Quite the opposite. Whenever I get into this world, I feel so dumb, which I'm totally it's like me walking into Lowe's. Like I'm just like a fish out of water, like looking for somebody that works there to help me. This is like me going to Lowe's. I don't know. But if you go to the rabbit. R1, just Google Rabbit R1 YouTube video. There's like 5 million hits. You could watch the gentleman present, you know, like the iPhone moment of Steve Jobs. Like it's kind of one of those things, but for this, and he explains it and actually uses it. And like, he's going to do a way better job of explaining it than I ever could for the record. I so admit this is the I'm Rabbit R1. I, I admit that I've never heard of this until so I got two now. of them. I got one of them in, in the second batch and I got one of them in the sixth batch. You know, seriously, JC, like what 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 do you read like resource wise or, or podcast you listen to or people do you follow on Twitter to know about kind of you know the latest innovation? It's things this thing's gone been going viral forever. Oh. Look at the YouTube. It's got, like, got like, it's like five million hits on YouTube or something crazy. Okay. All right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, how much is it? Two hundred bucks, hundred ninety nine dollars. Oh shit! No I wonder. know that's what I'm saying. So I said, "Ah, what the hell? I'll buy one." And then I was like, "Man, I really want one." So I'm, I paid four hundred and fifty bucks to get another one that I'm getting in the batch too. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna come on here talking to me about a, a rabbit. Uh, well, this is called. This is the rabbit. It's the name of the company, Rabbit R One. I thought it was gonna be like an actual rabbit. My brother in law's got one of those. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, all right, Spencer, what do you got? I wasn't talking about the Oscars, but we just did that, so um, kind of nothing. <laughs> uh, the Big East tournament is this week. I'm just going to say, oh, yeah. it, maybe not in its current form, but the Big East tournament from when I was a young adult, probably the best sporting event for me, at least. Like It is just such a blast. First of all, the competition back in the day was insane. Syracuse, Pittsburgh. UConn, Villanova, Georgetown, Miami, the most competitive conference. And you, you take the train in. Um, all of the tickets are for two games, not one. You could leave and come back. It's like a day in the city. It's just a blast. So that I want to, uh, I want to, I want to share Straza comes to the perspective from somebody who lives in Connecticut. Yeah. And I can tell you for a fact, going to the Big East tournament in the city is such a Connecticut thing to do. It's just oozing out of you right now, Straza, which is, we, which is cool. Uh, we used to come from UConn for it because we were cheering for our team. But, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I get it. We did. When we were in high school, too, we did that also. Such a Connecticut were, thing to do. If you're were you there around, in 2011 when Kemba did his thing? Were you there for I that? Was in, uh, no, 2011, I was working. That's another really cool thing during March Madness or these um, conference tournaments. If you ever worked at a hedge fund or financial services, they're watching the games and it's actually a blast. You're having like an office party. JC, do you have any experiences like that? Like yeah, the, very the much daytime so. sports yep. at these hedge funds and stuff. We so I remember exactly. I was actually at interactive brokers watching when Kemba Walker uh broke his kneecaps did, or whatever. Did did right. the thing, yeah. I could cry thing. Oh. Again, I was at interactive brokers. Such a Connecticut thing to say. Yeah, I'll never forget where I was at that because I wanted to be at that game, but it was busy yeah. season. Nice. We were trying to get we were trying to get a 10k out, dude. These 10ks always getting in the way. They did. Damn right. No, but you can see you can see like you can see the mob coming from Grand Central walking yeah. to uh Madison Square Garden like with their Yukon gear and their khaki pants like very Connecticut living <laughs> like a vest, you well, know, like a vest and then a Yukon hat, you know what I mean, Spencer? Well, part of the memories for me of like what I'm thinking is the the train ride in is just a party because it's Shit everybody show. just, you know, so there's 
I respect yeah. it. I respect yeah. it. Yeah, I do. All right. It is yeah. Monday, which means we got the Flow Show, 11.30 a.m. Eastern yes. time right here on Stock Market TV. Strauss and Sean finding an options trade on the fly. That's how they roll. Uh, thanks to our guest today, Austin Harrison. Thanks to everyone hanging out in the chat. If you'd be so kind, hit the like button. Check out all of the links to all of our good research and emails, uh, free and otherwise, uh, in the description on YouTube. And that's what I got. Go make some money. We'll see you later. Adios. You come. I can't take no loss. I don't even know what it